This is looking at close reading of an older prose extract using the story of an African farm. Okay, so before you do anything with an extract, you need to make sure that you've read it through and you really understand what's going on in it, literally and in terms of the plot, before you start looking for specific features and specific methods, techniques and choices that the writer has used to, to tell the story. So although it might be tempting to kind of um, jump straight in and start grabbing similes and metaphors and personification, etc., do try and, and read it through the first time, really kind of thinking, OK, what's happening? Make sure you know where it's set, what all the pronouns are referring to. It's really important, the older, the, the extract, in fact, because lots of older texts tend to have more convoluted syntax. They tend to have um, more kind of uh, reference using pronouns that you have to kind of trace those different clauses back and work out what's being spoken about. So just now, if you haven't already, just pause this video and read through the extract. Once you've done that, and even if you've got a paper copy in front of you, you can be marking little different things that kind of strike you as interesting as you're reading through it. But remember, your, your first kind of um, mission really is to make sure you know what's going on so you don't get the wrong end of the stick. But now we're going to look through it and start to look for things that you can talk about. Now, a lot of the time you'll get a question which says, how is something presented? How does the writer explore? Um, how is a character portrayed? All of those questions are inviting you to consider all the ideas and, and elements of narrative writing that you can do. So you're going to be looking for the regular kind of creative techniques such as uh, metaphor, simile, alliteration, personification, onomatopoeia, assonance, sibilance, asyndeton, polysyndeton, etc, etc. But you're also going to be looking at things that are peculiar to novels. So you're going to consider the narrative style, what persons it written in, what particular um, advantage is that giving this writer telling this story? Where is the focus of the story? Is it kind of wide? Is it narrow? Where is it shifting to? Why is it shifting to, to those places? Is there any dialogue? Um, if so, what's being said? How is it being said? What are we getting about those characters? And in this particular extract, you'll notice we've got song embedded in there as well. So let's just have um, a little think about what you might be able to say. Before you um, carry on with the video, I would really urge you to take a copy of the extract and to try and do that exercise for yourself so you're not just kind of picking up on, on what I've said. With that said, you've still got to work out exactly what's being spoken about, what the order of events are, and kind of picking up on the main themes and ideas. So at this point, I would pause the video and make sure that you're Now, hopefully you've had some ideas and you can now um, start to kind of draw them out. Now, I started looking at um, opening line, obviously, because we've got this idea. Gregory Rose had been gone seven months. M sat alone on a white sheepskin before the fire. We know from the title that this is the story of an African farm. So we know that we are in Africa and we've got these two characters in or, or reference to these two characters in a rural situation presumably but the opening line contrasts a character who's absent with a character who's present so we might want to start thinking about the impact of the absence of Gregory Rose we've got the male character has left whereas the female character is there is that going to have any significant impact on this extract we're going to realise that our female character is left very much in the domestic setting. Is she um, vulnerable in her isolation there? So then we move on to the next paragraph and the focus shifts to um, the weather, to a storm outside. It may be August, 
but you've got a um, night wind which is personified as threatening and almost supernatural. You can talk about the connotations of shrill, you've got the verb howled, and the idea that this is almost giving out a sigh of grief or mourning, but it is pervasive and violent. So you've not just got a kind of cry which gives connotations of, of upset, but you've got this kind of implicit violence um, from the it forced its way among the clefts of the stones. So there's a sense of um, this woman, M being alone and potentially being vulnerable within this building. The um, second paragraph opens with a very long sentence and then that's contrasted with the short sentence, the brutality of what's going on reflected in the bluntness of that sentence. It was a wild night. You then get a scene where the natural world is, seems to be in conflict with itself, the prickly pear tree stiff and upright as it held its arms and notice its arms rather than branches. So that kind of um, extension of the metaphor of outside being alive, there being human presence or there being kind of living presence out there. Felt the wind's might and knocked its flat leaves heavily together till great branches broke off. So again, the, the kind of threat from the wind. Um, you have people sleeping in straw huts and whispering that there would not be an, an armful of thatch left across, upon the roofs. And the beams of the wagon house creaked and groaned as if it were heavy work to resist the importunity. So the um, persistence of the wind. So you've straight away got a kind of conflict between the natural world and the human world. The natural world is is kind of fierce and, and intense and destructive. The human world is kind of sheltering itself. And we go back to M and the narrative adopts a question to show her, um, to explain her behaviour, to normalise her behaviour. That rhetorical question, who could sleep on a night like this? Well, it's it's so difficult to sleep that, that it becomes rhetorical. And it then sets out her actions which are incredibly domestic in terms of deciding that she's going to do the baking for the morning and her logic behind it. There is a quiet and still beauty in the house um, if you look at the amber glow, the white curls, um, which is completely at odds with the outside atmosphere. Now the narrative style here, it's been written in, in third person, but because we get an insight into M's ideas, M's motives, her kind of um, psyche, it, it moves into free indirect discourse. And this is where a third person narrator starts to give you an insight into the feelings of one character. And you're kind of alternating the focus between the outside and the inside and that idea of in, in emphasizing that idea of contrast um the storm is getting ever more intense but m is also singing so natural noise human noise kind of a, a two very different types of sound and her song is something restful um and something innocent an old childish song and if you look not only at, at, obviously, the song is embedded within the text, but the words that describe her and it as we're going through, you know, it's dreamily, softly. You know, it, it really is the kind of peace and um, restfulness of, of this woman, even as the world outside is, is kind of struggling, apparently, to get in. And look again at the lyrics of that song. So she's talking about a different natural world. If you're reading a text and you get a reference to willow, willows are normally associated with grief and sadness. And we've got the idea of a flower's head and the, the whiteness and the kind of um, uh, it unblemished sense of that. Um, you can always start when you're looking at um, flowers and, and images of that kind of beauty but the transient the temporary nature of beauty pick something up there and I think because 
the willow is in there because of what's gone before. I don't think it's that much of an accident to kind of point out the idea of mourning and mourning there. Um, she moves on to the next verse and the song itself takes a darker turn. You move, reeds dancing becomes reeds shake. The willow's song is said, but the moonlight sheen is shed. So, you know, um, the song is, is, is heard, but the moonlight is lost. Um, and falls into the face of the sleeping water. And the white flower is now floating dead, 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 dead. Um, she keeps singing and keeps repeating and harmonising. Um, while she's doing this domestic um, job. But again, the, the outside is increasing with intensity and the walls tremble. I'd look at the connotations of... Um, trembling and the idea of the house, the idea of the domestic being kind of under threat. Um, what you do with an extract like this will be guided by your question. So here I have given a very general question that, that says, how are M and her surroundings presented here? You try and start with a general summary that kind of encapsulates, that brings together the movement through the extract. So you might want to say that in this extra extract, Schreiner presents a world where, you know, you, you would want to maybe mention the contrast between the quiet domestic. You would want to maybe, uh, to, sorry, quiet domestic um, scene and the violent elemental forces outside. You might want to talk about... Um, an implicit sense of vulnerability. You might decide that actually the portrayal of M is, is something of a woman who isn't vulnerable, who is completely at peace despite the turmoil outside. And then set about trying to prove it. Wherever you can, you're trying to gather together presentation of, of different aspects. So one of the ways you could do that here might be to look at the presentation of the wind and rather than just chronologically moving through the extract, um, bringing in each particular idea as it comes in, look at the progression of the description of the wind through, then look at the description of M maybe. Generally, as long as you are shaping your answer, supporting it with evidence from the text, taking a step back to mention the writer's name, Schreiner, a lot and making sure that you're using that analytical language so talking about presentation to that conveys could suggest um, the connotations of the different words and images the possible symbolism of them then you will be doing a good analytical job and you won't be straying into the ground of paraphrasing or just narrating um, your article back or sorry your extract back to your reader. Good luck.